Welcome back to Little Paws Homestead. My name is Steph and today we're standing in the food storage room, guest bedroom, and what has turned into our incubator room and yard sale storage room. So if you've been following us on Instagram, you will know that we had some baby chicks hatch last night. They're still hatching now and we are very unprepared and need to get this brooder all set up for them. As I'm working in here, the light is going to kind of change a bit because one of the best things that we did for our homemade incubator, which you can see behind me, is that we got a temperature control that is typically used for reptile cages. So it'll turn the heat on and off when it reaches the right temperature. And that has let us keep this incubator at a steady temperature, even though our house is really cold and fluctuates a bit. And we've had a much better hatch rate ever since. So this is our incubator. The tape is covering some holes, which you probably just briefly saw, uh, which lets us adjust the humidity as needed. And then this is our temperature control. So we have it set at 100 and there is that little wire, oh, little birds. So that's a little wire that has a temperature or a thermometer, sorry, at the end of it. And so it turns our light bulb on and off when it hits the right temperature. So it'll be kicking on and off a bit today. So down in here we have some little birds that are starting to dry off. We don't want to take them out of the incubator until they're completely dry. Because it's nice and toasty warm in there for them. So our brooder is just a, how many liters is this? 30 gallon or 114 liter bin that I think I picked up at Walmart. And then the top we cut out and just put chicken wire over it. So that's, it's really simple, easy to clean. Um, and so it works really well for us. So the first couple days, because quail are so tiny, they're like little in the size of a bumblebee, we are going to use paper towels for the bottom because we have found that when we go straight to shavings in their first few days of hatching, they have gotten trampled in there, they've gotten caught up in the shavings and we've lost a couple that way. So we just line the bottom with paper towels. So I do probably two layers of them. And then they're easy to clean and we will keep them on paper towels for the first week. We've also found that the paper towels give them like a nice surface to walk on. And so we have a few less cases of splayed leg when they're like this, as opposed to if we just put them on like the bottom of the container, because it's the bottom of this container is obviously super slippery so it can cause their legs to splail out from them. So that's the first thing. So that's super simple. It's just in there, ready for them. So next we just need to put their food and water in. So we're gonna start with the water where we just use like a baby chicken waterer, but we will add marbles to it because quail are so tiny that they're prone to drowning. So we put enough marbles in that they can't have any spaces to stick their entire head in, which would get them hurt. And we just use a glass mason jar full of water. The first time we fill this mason jar up, we mix in some powdered coconut water so that we can give them some electrolytes to give them a boost in their first few days. So that goes on really easy. I'm just gonna unscrew the top. that on and then put it in. I still have to add the marbles but I will do that in a little bit. For a feeder we have found that these chicken feeders without anything on top of them so no mason jars no feeder we just fill them up with chick starter has worked best for us. What happens when we put like a container of feed on and they're still so tiny that they can fit into these tiny holes is that you run the risk of the quail getting up inside it and then being stuck in the jar and they can't find their way out again. So we just 
feed them in this and we just fill it up. We use turkey starter for our quail at all of their life stages. We find that they lay the best on it when they're adults. They can still eat it when they're babies um, and it's just worked the best for us. It's the easiest thing that we can find. We have not been able to find a game bird starter that is non-GMO around us. So they're going to get that. So that just goes in here as well. I usually put the water and the feed at opposite ends of the enclosure and then the light bulb will go in the middle. So that's what's next. We use a ceramic uh, heat bulb. So I actually stole this one from our bearded dragon and have since replaced it for him because I find that it works really well for the quail. We're not affecting them by having light on at night and they get to stay toasty warm with this. We wanted this light to be able to be adjustable as they grow and they don't need as warm of an environment we can pull the light up so when we cut the top off and before we put the chicken wire on the top of the bin we put a piece of wood on um, which should be the top of it this is upside down and i can as you can see put the wire from the light around it and then i attach it with big binder clips to make sure it stays in place and then that makes it super easy for us to lower it and raise it up as needed. I have to do a little bit more adjusting here to get it to the height that I want it. I put it pretty low down when the quail are still young. So they do need it to be pretty warm in there. So the brooder's all set. It's a pretty simple setup as you can see. The ceramic heater is very close to the, the bottom as you can tell, but it's not going anywhere because it has a binder clip. I will be adding another one to this side here so that it really can't go anywhere. And then their food is over here. So we do try and keep the food and water away from the light bulb so that if they're thirsty but they don't want to be hot, they can do that. And so now all we have to do is wait for this to heat up and wait for some more birds to hatch and then we can put them in. They're so cute. There you go. So we've had eight hatch right now? Eight? Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight. And Scott is behind me taking all of the dry ones out of the incubator. We don't want to take the wet ones out because they can get chilled, they can get sick, so they'll stay in there till they're fully dry. You're blonde. So essentially this guy's been trying to get out for a few hours. Um, so I just very carefully take a pair of tweezers and start to peel back little bits of the shell just to help him out. being very careful not to clip him. I think he got stuck. See, you can see the membrane right there. Mm -hmm. 
You see the membrane right there, so I think he got stuck in there. He's trying. And there we go. Let's put him back in the incubator now so that he can dry off. And that's pretty much all we do to take care of the of the baby quail. They'll stay in there until they're ready to go outside. Um, yeah, if you want to follow their growth and see all the other things that we get up to on the homestead, make sure to click that subscribe button uh, and uh, toss us a like. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.